But when we see the relative life as it actually is, it, it's not experienced just as an illusion, just as something you could put your hand through. It's very, it's very solid, it's very here, and yet there's something to be discovered in the relative experience of the world, that this very relative world that seems so ordinary and has such potential for difficulty is actually the divine. As I said earlier, when we see everything as God and nothing's left out of that everything, nothing's left out of it, then we're actually seeing relative life from the enlightened perspective. And then we're not even holding on to that. And as I said, then we're left to, to see what does that mean to live that, to manifest it, to bring it forth. Not in an idealized way, not in a perfect way, but just in the most simple way. So even though I used to, I had so many sort of transcendent experiences and went and, you know, long after I'd experienced sort of the absolute realm, and then when I wondered, geez, and, I, and this see, keeps showing up, and I realized it kept showing up, and it keeps showing up because there's, some, there's a reality to this that needs to be discovered as well. Little did I expect that it was the exact same reality as the Absolute, it just looked different. <laughs> it was the same thing appearing in a different way. You know, in the Absolute nature, everything disappears, there's nothing real, everything's in, um, insubstantial. And then you open your eyes and the, that very insubstantiality, that very nothingness is now appearing as a human being, as a room full of human being, and a floor and chairs to sit on and lights and a funny little man talking very strangely in the front, you know. And that's, that's, that is the same as the most transcendent experience we'll ever have. 